Hi guys, welcome to the next section of this course, Improving the Performance with Dimensionality Reduction. This section shows us how to select the features that best represent a set of data. You will learn feature extraction techniques for dimensionality reduction when transformation of variables is possible. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with feature selection. In this video, we will discuss the basics of stepwise regression, and further we will explore stepwise regression in MATLAB. Selection of features is necessary to create a functional model so as to achieve a reduction in cardinality, imposing a limit greater than the number of features that must be considered during its creation. In this figure, a general scheme of feature selection process is shown. Feature selection is based on finding a subset of the original variables, usually iteratively, thus detecting new combinations of variables and comparing prediction errors. The combination of variables that produces minimum error will be labeled as a selected feature and used as input for the machine learning algorithm. Now let us first discuss about stepwise regression. So, stepwise regression is a method of selecting independent variables in order to choose a set of predictors that have the best relationship with the dependent variable. Among variable selection algorithms, we have three methods, forward method, backward method, and stepwise method. In this figure, the criteria adopted from these three methods to select the variables are shown. To learn how to use a feature selection algorithm, we perform a stepwise regression analysis step by step. In MATLAB, to create a stepwise regression model, use the stepwise LM function. This function returns a linear model for the variables in the table or dataset array passed using stepwise regression to add or remove predictors. Here we will use the Yacht Hydrodynamics dataset, used to predict the hydrodynamic performance of sailing yachts from dimensions and velocity. This dataset contains these fields. To start, we download the data from the UCI Machine Learning Repository and save it in our current folder. To do this, we will use the Web Save function. It saves content from the web service specified by the URL address and writes it to file. We insert the URL address to the specific dataset into a variable named URL. Let's type URL and give the URL path. After that, we save the file. Next, we set the names of the variables in accordance with the previous example. After this, read the data into a table and specify the variable names. In the next line, run this command. So the data is now available in the MATLAB workspace in table form. Now we can perform a stepwise regression. Let us now print a summary of the main features. From a preliminary analysis of the statistics, you will notice a fair number of missing values. This is not a problem, as the stepwise LM function ignores them. However, we recall that it is possible to find, replace, or remove those rows by using the functions isMissing, standardizeMissing, and rmMissing, respectively. Now, to avoid problems in subsequent calculations, we should remove the rows with missing values. To this end, we will use the rm missing function to remove missing entries from an array or table. Let's type yacht hydrodynamics clean equals rm missing for yacht hydrodynamics. To confirm the removal, we display the size of the two tables that appear in MATLAB's workspace. Here's the first one. Let's do it again for the second table. The Yacht Hydrodynamics Clean table contains fewer rows because the rows with missing values have been removed. To get further confirmation, we can print the summary again. Use the summary function. No missing values are listed. To better understand how the MATLAB function works, it is advisable to have the response values in vector form and the predictive terms in matrix form. 
We have them in the form of a table. They can be transformed into arrays using the table to array function. Let's use the same line of code for y. Before passing our data to stepwise lm function, we need to give a first look to what we've got in the Yacht Hydrodynamics clean dataset. To do this, we will draw a simple scatter plot for each predictive variable versus the response variable. We use the subplot function with the different values. Done. From a quick analysis of the plots, we can see that the sixth predictive variable seems to be particularly correlated with the response variable. Let's see if we find confirmation from the feature selection analysis. Now, to create a residuary resistance stepwise model, starting from the constant model, simply type model1 equals stepwise lm in parenthesis x, comma, y, comma, constant, comma, response var comma, res resistance. So, here's the output for this command. As we started from a constant, the function added only the variables that it considered statistically significant, that is, x6, which equals fraud number. Let's try starting from a linear model that contains an intercept and linear terms for each predictor. Subsequently, step by step, Terms with no statistical significance are removed. We continue writing the code. Model 2 equals stepwise lm x, comma, y, comma, linear, comma, response var, comma, res resistance. Now let's see what happens if we start from the full interaction model. This model starts with an intercept, linear terms for each predictor, and all products of pairs of distinct predictors, that is, no squared terms. Subsequently, terms with no statistical significance are removed. Here's how we do this. Model 3 equals. We use the stepwise lm function and pass the same arguments, just replacing linear with interactions. And the rest of the parameters are the same. The result is the same, but the procedure followed is different. In this case, we started from a model which contains all variables and their interactions. Subsequently, the function gradually removed the less important variables, that is, high p-value, and their interactions. Let's finally see what happens by creating a full quadratic model as the upper bound, starting from the full quadratic model. At the beginning, this model contains an intercept, linear terms, interactions, and squared terms for each predictor. Subsequently, terms with no statistical significance are removed. Let's go ahead and write the code for model 4 using the stepwise lm function with the same parameters, just replacing the second parameter with quadratic. This time, the return model is more complex. The variable x6 is present as the square, and it also includes the interaction between this variable and x2. Although more complex, it certainly is more representative of the phenomenon given the results obtained. So you can observe the r squared, adjusted r squared, and the p value. We have seen that starting from different models, the stepwise lm function returns different results. Let's then compare these results. The first thing we can do is compare the adjusted r squared values. Here's the line of code to do this r squared equals model 1 dot r squared dot adjusted comma model 2 dot r squared dot adjusted comma model 3 dot r squared dot adjusted comma model 4 dot r squared dot adjusted. The first three models provide substantially the same results, while the fourth has a significant improvement. To extract more useful information to compare different models, we can draw residual plots of the four models. For this purpose, we will use the plot residuals function. 
It plots the raw conditional residuals of the linear mixed effects model in a plot of type specified by the user. In this case, we will plot residuals versus fitted values. We use the subplot function to assign values and the plot residuals function to fit the model. After running this code, you will get this plot of residuals versus fitted values for the four models built earlier. The first three models are practically identical. We can get the same result by analyzing the formulas of the models with their intercept. All four plots suggest a non-linearity of the distribution, but in the fourth model, the residuals seem more concentrated. Now to confirm this, we will calculate the deviations of the residuals. We define range 1, range 2, range 3, and range 4. Finally, we check the range for all the four. Indeed, the more complex models have a minimum number of deviations of residuals with respect to the others. In this video, we discussed the basics of stepwise regression and explored stepwise regression in MATLAB.